science can't tell us everything, and scientists would be the first people to admit that. Experimenting, testing, and theorizing are all parts of science, but those processes don't always reach solid conclusions. There are times when we're forced to accept that there are things we don't know or don't understand, but that's exciting. It's a reminder that we still have more to learn. See what you can learn from the science-defying finds in this video. You used to have to get on a ship or a plane to be an explorer, but now anybody can do it from their armchair thanks to Google Earth. There are whole websites dedicated to oddities and anomalies that have been found on Google Earth. Most of the strange finds have been explained, but not all of them. Here's one of the unexplained ones. It's a large, round object of some kind that's submerged in the Aegean Sea off the coast of Greece. Whatever it is, it's huge. It has a diameter of approximately 220 feet. It's so close to the beaches of Calamaria that it ought to be visible from the shore, but it isn't. Several theories have been proposed about the nature of the object, but none are overly convincing. The most popular idea is that it's a volcanic cone on the seabed, surrounded by material that's been ejected through a vent. There's no known volcanic activity in this part of the sea, though, so it doesn't sound like the right answer. Others have suggested that these are the foundations of an old lighthouse, but there's no record of a lighthouse here either. The mystery could presumably be solved by someone diving down to investigate, so we're not sure why that hasn't happened yet. Let's check out another Google Earth mystery. You might have heard of the Kraken. The word was in the news a lot in early 2021, thanks to Sidney Powell's hilariously awful attempts to overturn the results of the US election. But traditionally, the word Kraken refers to a sea monster, spoken of in fearful tales by ancient mariners. We have no idea whether the Kraken exists or not, but if it does, maybe it's right here on Google Earth. The image comes from the coast of Deception Island, right next to Antarctica. That's quite a long way from the traditional home of the Kraken, which is said to be somewhere between Greenland and Norway. Regardless of whether this is the wrong place to go Kraken hunting, there does seem to be something in the sea here. It looks large and organic, and even seems to be faintly glowing. A strange, unexplained, low-frequency undersea noise called the bloop was detected in this part of the world in 1997. Could this be the creature responsible for the bloop? Is this even a creature at all? Rather than the kraken, might it be a plesiosaur? All of these questions remain unanswered. Here's a more recent mystery. When this metal monolith turned up in the desert of Utah, USA in November 2020, it went viral and made headlines all over the world. Despite all of the attention that was lavished on the story, no explanation was ever found. Who put the monolith here and why? Was it a prank? Might it have been a guerrilla art exhibition? We simply don't know. A couple of copycat monuments turned up elsewhere in the world after the Utah artifact became famous, including one in Romania, but they were of a lower quality than the original. To make the mystery even stranger, the monolith stood unobserved in the desert for years before it was found. It was discovered by chance by wildlife resource officers, but when they used Google Earth to examine the area, they found that it had been there since around 2015. It's visible on the map because of the shadow it casts. It seems like someone was waiting for it to be found, though, because within days of its discovery, it vanished overnight and has never been seen again. A local prankster seems like the most obvious explanation, but we have to wonder what the point of the prank was. We're yet to land a human being on Mars but we've sent quite a few robots with cameras to the Red Planet in the past 20 years. They've given us some outstanding photographs of the Martian surface, and also provided us with a few mysteries. For example, 
Why does there appear to be a ball in this image produced by NASA's Curiosity rover in September 2014? Rocks on Earth sometimes get weathered into a spherical shape through a process called concretion. But based on what we know of conditions on the surface of Mars, the same effect shouldn't be possible there. However, it might have been possible millions of years ago. Scientists have long suspected that Mars once had liquid water and seas much like Earth. And if it did, that would explain what we see here. This photo is not the evidence of Martians playing basketball as some hoped that it might be. But it could be evidence that water once flowed on the surface of Mars. And that's a far more exciting prospect. It does make us wonder why rocks like this are so hard to find, though. If this rock was shaped by water, it should be surrounded by others. Almost everybody has heard of the myth of Atlantis, the mighty city that's said to have slipped below the waves thousands of years ago. Nobody knows where Atlantis is, or even if it was ever real, but many countries have their own local contenders. Here's a new one to add to the list. It's another Google Earth find, and it's off the coast of Mexico near Baja, California. Roughly 40 miles out to sea, a series of straight lines can be seen in the water. These lines run on for 75 miles, with an average width of 3 miles each. There appears to be no plausible explanation for what these lines are, so some people have suggested that it might be the remains of an ancient city. The long lines might be roads, and if we were to dive down there, we might find the ruins of buildings between them. The lines are so clear that it's impossible to deny that there's something there, but the authorities seem strangely reluctant to investigate. Could their reluctance mean that this is an undersea military facility of some kind? It seems odd that the remains of an ancient city would be so far away from the land, but then the presence of the lines is already odd to begin with. There's an island in Argentina that seems to rotate, and nobody can tell us why. The island is perfectly circular, and is surrounded by a crescent of water that can be tracked spinning around the island on Google Earth. It was found by movie producers while they were using the software to scout for possible filming locations. If you follow the history of the location back over a few years, the island's lake can be seen moving to the top, bottom, left, and right of the island. Between that strange phenomenon and the distinctive shape of the landmass, there are suspicions that it might be of artificial origin. That begs the question of who would make a rotating island and why. An attempt was made to raise funds for a visit to the area, which is near Campate in Buenos Aires province on Kickstarter in 2016, but it fell short of its funding target. We don't understand why that stopped anyone from going there since, though. Surely this is exactly the sort of thing that geologists and scientists should be interested in. The only thing that anybody outside of the United States government knows about Area 51 is that the facility exists. It's most likely to be a top-secret military research center, but there will always be those who believe that it's where the USA keeps all its knowledge about extraterrestrials. Pictures like this one are the reason why they still believe. It was found on Google Maps in June 2021 and shows a large, black and green teardrop-shaped crater or object in Death Valley, California. It seems to be surrounded by tanks and isn't far from an abandoned boat and a crashed plane. The information on Google Maps suggests that the object is around 340 feet long and appears to have a companion made out of sand positioned directly opposite it. To make things even weirder, the crashed plane appears to be almost skeletal in these pictures. It's unlikely that the black and green coloring is natural, so Google might have made an effort to obscure whatever's really in the image. Alternatively, if the colors are real, this object might not have a terrestrial explanation. It's either a black lake, a huge hole in the ground, 
or something else entirely. When people talk about the man on the moon, they usually mean that the arrangement of craters and mountains on the lunar surface looks like a human face when we look at it from Earth. The only literal men on the moon have been the ones we've sent there in space rockets. Or have they? Does this picture, taken in August 2014, show a humanoid figure walking across the bottom of a deep crater on the lunar surface? Probably not, but it's fun to speculate. The picture comes from Google Moon, which is a lesser-known Google product that maps the surface of our planet's celestial companion. Some of those who've seen the picture point out that the figure seems to have longer arms than a human does, so it might even be an extraterrestrial. Whatever the image might be, it's not fake. The photo comes directly from NASA and hasn't been edited or manipulated, and it's there on Google Moon for whoever wants to go and see it. It's probably a shadow or a trick of the light, but nothing like it appears anywhere else on the moon's surface. There are hundreds of islands in the South Pacific. Sandy Island isn't one of them. This is the curious case of a phantom island that can be seen on Google Earth, but isn't there in real life. The island is fairly large, roughly the same size as the U.S. city of Manhattan, and appeared to be situated to the northwest of New Caledonia when it was first noticed on the Google platform. It always looked strange because of its dark color and polygon-like shapes, so researchers sailed out to take a look. When they arrived at the coordinates, they found nothing but open sea. It's hard to work out what's happened here, but the mystery predates Google Earth by well over a century. The first mention of Sandy Island comes from the logs of a whaling ship, called Velocity in 1876. By 1908, it appears in British Admiralty maps of the region. Subsequent voyages failed to find it, and so it was removed from most maps by the 1970s but persisted on others. Unfortunately, one of the maps that still featured the non-existent island was used to create the World Vector Shoreline Database, which belongs to the U.S. military. The World Vector Shoreline was then fed into Google Earth, thus creating the expectation of an island where no physical island existed. That explains why it looked like a black hole on the map, but it doesn't explain what the Velocity saw in 1876. Everybody loves a good UFO story, so let's look at one of the best. This picture clearly shows a crashed disc-like object in a mountain range in Arizona, USA. Like so many other photos in this video, it was collected by Google Earth. Next to the stranded disc-like object is a white van, which provides a sense of scale and confirms that somebody knew where to look for the unexplained object. To compound the intrigue, this part of Arizona is designated as a no-fly zone. Simply put, there shouldn't be anything here. As tempting as it might be to believe that this is a crashed flying saucer, though, there's probably a better explanation. A good reason for the military to create a no-fly zone in the area would be if they're testing new kinds of military planes. This could be a new type of stealth bomber, or a large drone of some kind. We can't rule out the possibility of it being a spacecraft, but we shouldn't pretend that it can't be anything else. Some people even say that it's nothing more remarkable than an old, abandoned water cistern, but we think that's probably inaccurate. It's a good job that Siberia isn't densely populated, because if it was, these sinkholes would be an enormous problem. Entire streets, and perhaps even whole towns, might be swallowed overnight with zero warning. In July 2020, a Russian television crew flew over a remote region of Siberia and noticed a crater that's over 100 feet deep and 60 feet wide. The crater had not been there the previous week. It's the ninth such large hole to appear in this sudden fashion since 2013, and the phenomenon is unexplained. 
When the first one appeared, it was suggested that it might have been a freak incident caused by a meteorite impact or the collapse of an underground cavern. But it's unlikely that 13 separate incidents could be explained the same way. The most unsettling possibility is that the craters are caused by explosive buildups of methane gas beneath the surface. There is an enormous amount of methane in the Siberian permafrost, but the permafrost is melting. That means more methane is released every year, and that could mean more explosions and more craters if the methane is to blame. Siberia might soon look like Swiss cheese if this carries on. Given the relentless propaganda that comes from North Korea, it's hard to say with any certainty what is or isn't happening in the country. However, in 2017, all signs pointed to the idea that they might be building artificial islands around their coastlines, and that the islands could be full of military equipment. The islands are in the Yellow Sea, close to the Sohei Satellite Launching Station. Studying Google Earth images of the area shows a process of island building, road widening, and the addition of concrete structures on the islands over a period going back several years. That's a worry for the nation's traditional enemies, because Sohei has been used to test intercontinental ballistic missiles in the past, and so any expansion of its facilities is unlikely to be welcomed. This might not necessarily be what it appears to be, though. Rather than giving North Korea new offensive capabilities, the facilities might be missile silos for defensive use. The one thing that's for sure is that we're unlikely to find out anytime soon, because North Korea is notoriously reluctant to tell the outside world anything. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!